Higher education costs have grown rates in excess even of those of healthcare, and they are exceeding families' ability to pay. With jobs hard to come by, the wisdom of investing in college education is increasingly questioned. Sadly, higher education is often presented or discussed now as a private benefit rather than a public good. We must convince others that we are a public good, worthy of public investment, and essential for the future success of the nation. Because if we fail, a college education may once again become the preserve of the wealthy and the privileged. Very much the thing that Justin Morrow was actually trying to lead the deep nation away from. And frankly, our nation will slip further down the international level of competitiveness. Perhaps technology will provide an answer to some of the cost challenges. But what are the implications for you in the end? MIT and Harvard are investing $60 million in a new online course initiative. They're not doing that altruistically, but because they see a huge global educational opportunity for themselves and a future revenue source. Some institutions with huge resources will see themselves as the providers of education to an increasing proportion of the world's students. Probably shouldn't make the analogy, but you can see the analogy can be drawn with the banking industry. UVM will make a distinct identity, a demonstrated value, and a competitive edge to prosper in the new educational world. That will mean exploiting our location and its attributes in programmatic and experiential learning models, and embracing, and embracing technology in cost-effective ways. But they're going to have to align, align with things that we can do better than others. It means relying on high quality content from others in some areas and focusing our content development on areas where we have a competitive advantage. And in turn, making that available to others. There will be new delivery models. They will combine asynchronous learning, real life experience, community college credit, and residential college courses in a variety of ways. Better use of facilities year round will be essential and can make college education more affordable create new program opportunities and encourage powerful alliances and partnerships that will generate new revenue. However, we will have to change our way of doing business. If we don't, others will. We know that we are facing an environment of declining demographics in the primary area of the country where we currently recruit students. We know that public funding is, will be at best constant, likely to decline, uh, particularly for research. Um, we know that there is uh, a need for us to become more affordable to families and still deliver high quality education. And we know that we have, uh, we are no longer, we've reached our full capacity in terms of undergraduate enrollment um, with uh, housing and, and just ability to deliver courses. So we won't be able to grow our way out of, out of the problem. Are we just basically changing the names on the deck chair, so to speak, with all of this? Or are we really fundamentally changing our techniques, our approach to how we're going to be able to survive going forward? There will be some you know, real creative changes in how we deliver courses that comes out of the system. Process. But it's also about creating more value through the you know the existing mode of residentially based high quality undergraduate and graduate education. The, the IMF recently wrote a report on Greece, and they have a phrase in there that I, when I read it, I thought of the University of Vermont. You're not going to like this, John, but the phrase was structural incrustations. <laughs> and as part of this process, I think it's an opportunity to really find those structural incrustations <clears throat> and knock them down and, and try to find a way to make the institution be more flexible to be able to adapt to some of the challenges that Rob mentioned in his opening remarks. Institutions like this, with the legacies and the personalities and Everything has structural infestations, and I'm sure you're bumping into some of those things. You go through this process. So.
So I think one of the greatest outcomes of this would be to find some of those large infestations and eliminate them. We do have a few infestations. <laughs> um, and those of you of, of, of long memory will know that I actually some of those in about 2001, 2002, some of which we actually effectively implicated, implemented, some which we didn't. Um, but I think that the key is that, you know, you, these things don't usually work top down. They don't usually work bottom up either. In, in effect, you've really got to create some sort of approach which has both leadership and engagement in it to really get somewhere. And I think, I feel optimistic that as the president of Lake Sullivan comes on board with the information that we've got on all sorts of areas, it really helps as a sort of roadmap or, or, or a starting point that we've got to continue those, those discussions. We need to build enough revenue to run the organization, and we of course match revenues to expenses. If we benefit on the revenue side, which we have in the past year, Coming to this board, to your point, Rob, we can create, coming back to the board and creating a reallocation of those funds. You can well imagine where they go. Programs, deferred maintenance, things that we're leaving on the sideline right now. On the other hand, on the expense side, we hold the administration's toes to that fire. You must come in within that expense. And we've been through that in the last few years. It's been gruesome whether it's no salary increases to the staff or whatever. The best predictor is the prior year because behavior of every year's cohort is different, but the best is the, usually the year before. However, last year, we lost market share, if you continue to look at our demographics, in key demographics of students that I think were, again, the type of students that we would, quote unquote, envision as UVM students, and create key New England markets. If I allow that to continue, then this issue of overall net revenue, I put it at strategic risk. My concern is the model for one of a better way of putting it. I think the demographic challenges are there. They're, they're, they're making it hard for us. I think the competitive challenges are getting, are increasing. Um, this year, I, I, and I know Chris had even more of them, I had more emails and more phone calls from parents looking for additional financial aid after, you know, after decisions have been made that I'd ever seen before. Um, I think we've seen more and more of a pattern of students. We see it particularly on the Vermont side, but not exclusively. Families choosing that, uh, that their son or daughter is going to start their college education in the community college system, uh, perhaps live at home, perhaps take some courses online, whatever it is, and then transfer. The models are changing, and that's really what I was trying to get at. We're not going to be able to run the institution forever based on the 18 to 22 year old model that we've had in place for, for a long period of time. If you increase tuition at 4% each year, and you increase financial aid at 8%, your net tuition goes up 80 basis points a year, plus 1%, but well under the rate of inflation. So if you want to drive your FA dollars at 8 or 9 or 10% a year, which is probably less than what it's been in the last 10 years, if you want to do that again for another 20 years, you are going to be looking at uh, gross headline tuition numbers that are 6, 7, 8 percent. And my, my own personal view is you can't sustain that. So I think what we're asking for is motions on, uh, resolutions on tuition charges for 2013, online tuition rate, room and meal plan rates, student fees for 2013, regular student senate fee for fiscal 13, regular continuous registration fee, FY13 budget planning assumptions for general fund. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you.